Hi, Neville Martin here for Guitarist Magazine, and once again I find myself in a, an incredibly privileged position because I'm sitting here with a, an in, amazingly special guitar in my hand. This guitar was Gary Moore's very famous Red Strat, and many of you might remember his utterly stunning performance with it at the Fender 50th Anniversary Strat concert where he played probably the best version of Hendrix's Red House ever since the best version of that by the man himself. I'm here because Fender have brought out a limited edition custom shop uh, remake of this guitar as faithfully as they possibly can. John Cruz of the custom shop has done it. And um, I just want to just show you this guitar a bit. I, I know it a little bit because I first met it when I interviewed Gary in 2004 in London and he kind of put it in my hands. And I remember at the time thinking, I put my hand around the neck by the nut here and I thought, that's the best feeling strap neck I've ever played. And to this day, it probably still is. It's it's really slim from front to back here. And the um, the wood of the of the maple fares between the neck right into the uh, into the back of the headstock with no volute or anything. It's really really gently cu curved and beautiful. It's quite a slender neck all the way up. Gary had it refretted with the biggest frets he could get at the time, which are huge. Um, it's got a pretty slim looking headstock there. But let's get, go around the front. The pickups have been changed a bit. There's a, the, more about this in the actual feature but I think the centers are Seymour Duncan an antiquity. Um, various bits of uh, electrical stuff has been changed in, in here. The, um, when the volume pot went, um, Graham Lilly, Gary's uh, tech at the time, um, moved the other controls further up. So you'd have an original control, the tone control taking the place of the volume control, et cetera, et cetera, and a new one was put on here. If you look at the, um, the battleware, this battleware, according to Graham, is mostly Gary's. Um, um, and it's interesting, you can see where the, 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 the top finish, which is a very thin kind of faded Fiesta, is worn through and you can see a brighter Fiesta underneath. And we can't, nobody can work out, even John Cruz couldn't really work out what that's all about. May have been sunburst, may have been painted over again and then again. We, don't, we just don't know. And that's the beauty of a historical guitar like this. You don't know what life it's had and that's kind of part of it, really. If I turn it over, prepare for this. It's not all very pink going around the back here. <laughs> and that's that's lots and lots of gigs and lots of buckle marks and lots of Gary's famed aggression on the guitar. See the three springs uh, in, in, an, in a triangular shape there, which uh, a lot of people do like to do. The end, the, end, the edge of the uh, cavity here is really rounded. Um, I don't know if you can see that. It's, uh, there's, no, there's no squareness. That's really radiused off just with wear. Um, it's incredible all the, the wear around there, or it's even bashed about. Gary always used these Damasio um, snap-on uh, straps because it made a very secure guitar and it was quick to, to release. Um, the wear on the neck, you can see that's uh, that's typical um, of, of this kind of thing. And uh, it's just, this is a stunning piece of history and made incredible music in the hands of one of the greatest guitarists that uh, these shores, islands have ever produced. Amazing thing. And now I'm going to get the replica out and you can have a look at that. Here we have the replica and uh, I think you'll agree that on first sighting it's really hard to tell the difference. Um, Gary's strap, the, the white um, nylon webbing of Gary's strap had gone as you'd expect, quite dirty over the years. These, these are nice and brand new, but they're the same ones, which is, I think, brilliant. Um, the colour's really, really close, and the ageing is incredible. When you consider that they're making, you know, a number of these, a limited number of these, to keep replicating the kind of wear, and all the salient marks, like those things there, and the way the uh, this gouge here has been done, is so similar to Gary's, and, and the kind of look almost look like knife cuts there. They're all very, very similar to, to Gary's. The neck has a very similar kind of slender, the slender this way feel. It's much narrower than, uh, much, sorry, much slenderer, more slender than uh, some of the strats that I played. Um, this, the pick guard as well, they've managed to make this pick guard look much more authentic than some of the just the plain flat green ones that you get these days. It's a great job. Both guitars have the three-way selector. And they both have the normal um, 
controls. There's there's no um, there's no um, tone control on this this pickup. Round the back, you'll see that the um, the wear has been pretty faithfully replicated. Um, the colouring here is slightly different because it's been artificially done. And on Gary's guitar, obviously, it was done by natural wear over decades. So, you know, it's oil. There's there's there's, there's oil and grease. You've, you've, he's held it, and you know his DNA's gone into the damn thing. And uh, but actually, you can see on this, and I didn't point it out on the on Gary's original. There's the yellow there, which could hint this that this was once sunburst under the colour under the the faded fiesta on the top. But again, who knows? Um, all of the wear again is, is so faithfully replicated. Um, a very very dark fingerboard on this, like Gary's. Big frets again, nice kind of darkened uh, clay dots. I'm turning it over, the wear has been replicated here, but you know, as usual, it's very hard to make that feel like it's created by hands going over it a million times. And there's a very ever so slight step there, but that that will soon go with with natural playing, if indeed the person who buys this plays it, which often they don't. Um, custom shop logo on the back, as you'd expect. On uh, on. The original guitar, the the Fender logo had gone quite black, as I think it possibly oxidizes or something goes strange with the transfer. But um, other than that, it's pretty great. On this, there's a bit of a lute on the volute on the back there. Gary's doesn't; it goes straight into the thing. I, I, they often do this, and I wish they kind of wouldn't. But um, that's par for the course. We actually played both of the guitars through a Fender Deluxe Tweed amp, one of the new custom shop ones. Fantastic little amp. Uh, but we used one of Gary's own DS1 Boss distortion pedals um, with his own markings on it like we had last time with the Tomb Screamer, Screamer and it made a huge difference. It makes the guitar sound very, very dark. The pickups on this were wound by Josefina Campos and um, the, the people who put the guitar together said it sounded very, very similar to the original and it does. If anything, I'd say it might be slightly more powerful. But that could be the, the, the height of the pickups. You never know. It's these tiniest, tiniest micromatic um, adjustments make all the different, all the difference. Um, but look at it. It's a fabulous beast. It comes with so much case candy. It comes with a, a, an original style Gary Moore flight, red flight case um, trimmed in aluminium. It's a serious piece of stuff. Um, it's a an amazing guitar, actually. And although I only played them for a few minutes, I really loved both of them. And uh, I wouldn't turn my nose up at this.